Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crimin' Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, traction, which is a new word I've made up that combines the word trash and action. Yep, I've got two trashy men's adventure novels for you. So this, of course, is part of my ongoing Countdown to Garb August series. Um, I couldn't not talk about men's adventure books, given how frequently I do talk about men's adventure books on the channel. Um, so I've got two to talk about today. Both are the first in the series um, that they come from. Uh, so I've got uh, The Black Berets Deadly Reunion by Mike McRae um, and uh, Zedcom Swastika by Carl Manning. Or Manning. I'm, never, I'm not sure how he pronounced that name because it's only got one end. Um, it's not his real name anyway. His real name was David Alexander. Um, and, and that is probably the first thing to say about these books is as well as being Men's Adventure, which is typically trashy, um, they also have that other um, trait of trashy books uh, of not actually be, having been written by the person whose name is on the cover. Um, so as I said, uh, Carl Manning or Manning is uh, a pseudonym. So the, the author's real, well, I think it's his real name, is David Alexander. He certainly published other books as David Alexander, um, including the Phoenix series, which I've talked about um, on this uh, ch on the channel before, which is a really crazy over the top um, men's adventure, like post-apocalyptic series. Um, and the Black Beret series, uh, so Mike McRae was effectively like a house name, so a number of different people uh, wrote books under the name of Mike McRae for the series, including, um, I've forgotten his name now, <laughs> Michael McDowell, um, author of the Blackwater Saga, which I've talked about uh, on the channel before. I don't think McDowell wrote this one, um, but he did write some of the books in the series. Um, and they're very similar in a lot of ways, these books. So, so they are both about teams of... Um, soldiers effectively who um, who go on missions basically so like the um, Able Team series uh, which I've which I have mentioned on the channel before which is a spin-off from the Executioner books um, these two feature you know teams of heroes who go up against the bad guys um, in Deadly Reunion um, the team are five um, Vietnam veterans who fought together in Vietnam um, and get pulled together again Rambo style to go back to Southeast Asia to rescue a guy who they knew back then um, who's being held as a prisoner of war. I'm just trying to see when, the, I can't remember when this was written in relation to Rambo. So this actually came out before Rambo. I think Rambo came out in 85? I might be completely wrong, but this came out in 1984 anyway. Um, but clearly that trope of, um, you know, American prisoners of war, um, you know, in in Southeast Asian hell holes um, was a really common one in the 80s. Um, in Zedcom, you have a team of four. Uh, one of one of the Zedcom um, combat. Oh no, there are five of them actually. But one of them is a woman. Um, and she's also like a stripper. So, so that's that seems completely <laughs> appropriate. Um, so the first, the the scene where you meet her, she is uh, like an exotic dancer. Um, and two of the other um, members of the team are kind of drooling over her, which is a little bit weird and uncomfortable. Um, and in this book, they go and take on a gang of neo-Nazis who've taken over a small town um, in the kind of Midwest somewhere. Um, so they're both, you know, they're both fun books, but neither of them were, neither of them were brilliant. Neither of them were as good as the best men's adventure kind of stuff I've read. Um but what they have in common, uh, and what I thought was interesting is, um, you know, looking at both of these books, you would expect them to be quite jingoistic and, and right wing. And, and they are to an extent. Um, but what's interesting is that in this book, and this is a kind of a minor spoiler, I won't, I'll try not to spoil it too much. But um, the team get, you know, get brought back together again to go to, I can't remember where it is, I think it's Laos, um, to rescue this, this guy they knew. Um, but there's a twist. There's a really big twist. And it turns out that actually um, the real baddies are not um, you know, Southeast Asians at all. Um, it's people much closer to home, let's put it that way. 
Um, so there was an interesting twist that turned this kind of right wing conservative um, trope about, you know, American prisoners in, in Southeast Asia on its head and made something completely different out of it. And I thought it was I thought it was really interesting. What's also good about this is the leader of uh, um, the leader of the team, the Black Barrows, is actually um, an Asian American. Um, and the, there's a fantastic opening sequence where he takes on a couple of rednecks who've uh, who've kind of captured or uh, basically imprisoning and torturing um, this young Native American kid. Um, and it really gets you, you know, you get really angry at them and the vengeance he, you know, brings down on them is, is truly righteous and very enjoyable to read um, as a result. So it was less right wing than you might have expected it to me. There's there's more kind of liberalism in there um, than I expected, and it's a it's a fun read. So the act, the, the action sequences weren't quite as uh, frequent as I expected them to be, and it was quite plot heavy. There's a lot of twists and things like that in the plot, um, but the characters are fun. You know, it's a range of um, you know kind of uh, alpha male type characters, all quite entertaining to read. You know, slight it's slightly tongue in cheek. It's not hugely tongue in cheek. But the author clearly knows that he is dealing with pretty gross stereotypes. Um, but yeah, the action when it does happen is truly tense and you know really enjoyable, and it was it was a lot of fun to read. Um, and yeah, in this one they're going up against um, neo Nazis and um, like basically a, a, a Christian religious leader um, who's brainwashing the people who go to his church. So quite an interesting uh, set of villains in this, um, you know, all white, all, um, you know, conservative, um, all people who you might almost expect to enjoy reading this kind of book. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was it was not what I expected in, in that regard. Um, the action in this one, so, so the action in the Black Berries book is, I, I hesitate to say that it's realistic, but it's kind of you know, it's kind of realistic in terms of, you know, being quite action movie-ish, but not crazily over the top. Um, whereas the, the violence in this is just absolutely bonkers. It's not as bad as uh, as in the Phoenix books, which truly are massively over the top. But, it, you know, it is incredibly gory at times. Uh, and, you know, when people die, they, they, you know, they completely fall apart, basically, literally. Um, so yeah, it was it was entertaining, and again, the um, he he does a very good job of building up the the neo Nazis as the bad guys, and you know making them truly awful people. Um, and so you know when the when when Zedcom um, do get their you know their revenge on these guys, or do you know bring these guys to justice, um, it's it's very satisfying as a result. Um, but yeah, there's something about men's adventure books which is they follow you know whilst I'm saying with these two that the you know the politics of them are maybe not quite what you'd expect like a lot of trash fiction books like this follow a uh, a formula um and you know in this one you know the first third of each of these books is about the squad you know coming together and then you know particularly in this one there's the middle third is them training um, being you know being ready to uh, to to go back to um, to Asia to to rescue the guy they they're trying to rescue, um, and there's you know there's a lot of kind of preparation type stuff in this one as well, and then the final third is the you know the full on action sequence, um, if you like. So there's a definite formula that the books follow, and that as I've said in you know previous videos I've done about trash, that's part of the fun, is you you pretty much know what's going to happen and you're along for the ride and you're part you know you you feel like you are um you know in a team with the with the writer because you are you're both heading in the same direction um so yeah both both fun reads neither of them brilliant but both very entertaining um and there's something about men's adventure books that just appeals to um you know appeals to the action movie fan in me um appeals to the the, the you know that those I guess that that thing of wanting righteous justice, um, you know, that thing that, you know, many of us feel where, you know, when we see wrongdoing, um, we wish there was something we could do about it. Um, and in, you know, in books like this, there is wrongdoing and you know that the right stuff is going to be done about it. And that's really satisfying. It's like in, you know, in a romance, when you read a romance, you know that 
the the couple will go through a load of you know a, a load of trials their love will be put to the test but at the end everything will be okay and and they will uh, you know they will reconcile their differences um and you know live happily ever after and it's you know it's very much the same with these books you know that the that the the wrongdoers will be will be brought to justice uh you know that there will be a bit of tension along the way um, but then it'll all work out okay in the end and that's a very satisfying thing to read um in a quick trashy book okay time for a random book from the shelves then so Going on with the kind of Men's Adventure theme, I've chosen a Jack Reacher book. So I have a ton of Jack Reacher paperbacks lying, lying around the house um, and a few of my Kindle as well. And I'm gradually trying to work my way through the, the series, albeit I haven't read any of them for ages. Um, but I've, I started reading them when they first came out and then kind of lapsed. Um, but the Reacher series on Amazon Prime, which I thought was absolutely great, um, has kind of reinvigorated my love for Reacher. So, And, and I see him very much as a... Um, a modern men's adventure type character so you know there there's a bit more plot and a bit more thought maybe that goes into the books than into you know the kind of pulpy stuff like this um, but they definitely fulfill that same requirement from the reader of you know showing you nasty people doing bad stuff but you knowing that there's a good guy who's going to sort it all out um, so yeah I'm a big fan of the Reach books. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your views on Men's Adventure books if you are a fan. Um, but, yeah, aside from that, I hope you're safe and well. I hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.